Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, good afternoon or good evening for everyone of you. Uh, today we are going to uh, uh, learn about the uh, uh, principles and the configurations of the HDLC and PPPP uh, protocols. So uh, this DL, uh, HDLC and BPP protocols actually are used for serial communication. So here uh, for for today, uh, everything actually is going to be based on point-to-point uh, -point communication, which is uh, using serial links. <coughs> so after we finish this class, uh, you will understand how to explain uh, uh, or to explain how data is carried over a serial-based medium. So you understand how the data is going to be uh, transmitted or transferred over the uh, serial-based uh, links. And also, uh, you will know how to configure uh, link layer protocols for serial links. <coughs> okay. Let us start with the uh, serial signaling. Uh, as I mentioned, serial signaling, as I, uh, as I said, it's uh, uh, serial in general is based on the concept of point-to-point -point connection. So uh, the point-to-point -point con uh, connection, it has two modes. The first mode is the asynchronous, and the second mode is the synchronous. So uh, in the uh, asynchronous, uh, there will be an extra bits used for the packet to show the stop point and the start point of the packet. So as you can see here, as you can see here in, in this slide, so here is a byte for the start and another byte for the stop and also here. So in this case, uh, extra uh, bytes will be inserted to the packet uh, but at the same time, we uh, don't require to uh, have a timer at any site. So every site can transmit data uh, anytime without synchronization. Uh, for the second scenario, uh, which is the synchronous, in the synchronous case, the, uh, the bucket doesn't have uh, a start point and the, uh, an uh, stop point as we see here in the asynchronous, but we have here in one side we have a timer. So the timer normally is at the side of the DCE. DCE means data communication equipments. So for the serial, for the serial synchronous connection, uh, we have to have two sides. One side is a DCE and the other side must be a DTE. So one side is DCE to do the uh, synchronization and uh, to control the timing. And uh, the second one is uh, DTE, which supposed to be attached or uh, sorry, supposed to be connected to the DCE and get the control from the DCE. That's why uh, here we don't have extra bytes added to the, uh, to the data bucket. I don't want actually to uh, explain much about it because this one is uh, not uh, the main idea of uh, this topic. Uh, but anyway, you can go through the things here, the comments here to understand or to get an idea about it. Uh, this is actually a general uh, information that can, uh, can be found uh, at any website. So uh, this is very, very general, very basic information you can go through by yourself. So uh, here, uh, for serial connectivity, we have uh, in this class or in these slides, we have two protocols, two main protocols. The first one is the HDLC and the second one is the BBB protocol. So this, the, uh, sorry, HDLC protocol stands for High Level Data Link Control high level data link control, which is HDLC. 
which is uh, a bit of uh, a bit oriented data link protocol that is capable of supporting both synchronous and uh, asynchronous data transmission. So HDLC protocol can support both types of uh, serial communication. Mm -hmm. A uh, complete HDLC frame consists of uh, the flag fields that are used to mark uh, the start and the end of uh, an HDLC frame, often as 0111110 or this one. So when a frame is to be suddenly aborted and discarded, so this one Actually, uh, these values are used for the flags to represent the start and the end points of the frame. So uh, an address field supports multi-point situations where one or multiple uh, secondary terminals communicate with a primary terminal in a multi-point, multi-drop topology known as unbalanced connections as mm -hmm. opposite to the more commonly applied balanced point-to-point -point connections. So this is very general. I don't want to uh, waste your time uh, explaining this. Uh, as I mentioned, this, uh, the, the uh, serial communication is very basic. So we have two devices connected remotely through what they call it serial link. So here they have no choices. I mean, this path is fixed for these two, and it's not shared by anyone else. It's not shared by anyone else. It's totally different than the uh, multi-point to multi-point or, or point to multi-point connections because this one cannot be shared. But in the uh, in the uh, Ethernet connections, so maybe these two routers are connected through another router or maybe through another switch. So this link can be, uh, can be easily shared uh, uh, with another device here, and here also another device may be sharing this, this link as well. Then this two can communicate as well here, and this one also can communicate like that. This one also can communicate like this. So that's why this scenario is called uh, uh, shared or multi-point uh, to multi-point, or maybe one point to multi-point. Uh, many scenarios actually can be uh, explained, but uh, the main difference here between the Ethernet and the serial uh, is that this in the serial, the link is dedicated for two points, which is only point-to-point -point connectivity. <coughs> so here in, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, HDLC protocol, we have actually this bucket format. So we have flag here, we have address, we have control, we have information, F, C, S, and also another flag. So this flag is for the start point and this flag is for the end point. Uh, here the address is the address of the uh, uh, other side and, and the control is another thing. So we are going to explain this later uh, to see uh, what is this for. So, uh, only the information frame I format is used on AR2200 series. So uh, this one is one of the formats uh, that's used for this router. So uh, different routers or different versions of the router means uh, maybe uh, different formats for the packets of the HDLC. So uh, it depends on the standard that's implemented in uh, the device, in the, in the physical device. So uh, here, the address field supports multi-point multi situations. This one is the address of uh, 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 the uh, destination. And here, the control field defines, the control field, this one, defines uh, the frame type as uh, either information supervisory or un, uh, unnumbered uh, and frame check sequence FCS field for ensuring the integrity of the frame. So here, uh, the control actually is to define the type of the frame. As I mentioned, 
So uh, this FCS is only for a frame check sequence, which is something similar to the checksum. Uh, I, I just want to simplify for you because this one is, uh, I mean, the, the deep details are out of the scope of this course. <coughs> so uh, here, what do we still have here? I will go through of the control field frame types only uh, the information frame type is supported by Huawei ARG3. So it depends on what kind of hardware, then you will see what kind of uh, frame uh, is supported in that uh, hardware. <coughs> so the information frame type carries send uh, ends and receive ends. So we have number of senders and number of receivers. Sequence number, so this one is the uh, sequence number of the sender and the sequence number of the receiver, and uh, as well as bool and final bits, P and F, for communicating status between primary and secondary stations. So as I mentioned here, we have one side is a DCE and the other side is DTE, so the DCE is the main and the DTE is the secondary, okay? Uh, supervisory frame types in HDLC are used for error and flow control and unnumbered frame types are used to uh, manage link establishment, for example, between primary and secondary stations. So this is a general information as well. Uh, here, the concept is like this. If we have two routers, then we uh, have only the communication, the serial communication to connect them together. So in this case, we are going to use the serial interfaces. Instead of Ethernet or gigabit Ethernet interfaces, we are going to use the serial interfaces. Then uh, definitely you will see the serial uh, link, which is using this shape. Okay, so uh, here, uh, to configure the routers for uh, uh, one uh, or point-to-point -point serial connectivity, uh, you have two types, the basic type and uh, what they call it, the unnumbered address uh, configuration. So the basic type or the basic configuration is to give an IB address for every interface here, for every involved, involved interface. Then after that, you go to the first side, the router A, then you do this configuration, you go to the serial port interface and uh, type this command link-protocol HDLC to enable the H HDLC. Because for the link protocols, we have two, HDLC and PPP. In our case here, we want to enable the HDLC. So after that, we will receive this message, the encapsulation protocol of the link will be changed. Continue, yes or no? We have to hit yes if we want to continue, otherwise we have to cancel by pressing in. Uh, if we want to continue, then after that we have to assign an IB address for the interface. Also, we have to go to router B, then we go to the interface S100, then also we have to enable the link protocol HDLC, and also we have to hit yes and after that, we have to assign another IP address, which is uh, from the same branch. So maybe in, in this case, we, we can use for, for this interface, we can use, for example, 10, 1, or oh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, with 30 subnet mask. Okay, so uh, this IP address, is accessible for this IP address because they are from the same subnetwork. So after that, the uh, two routers will be able to communicate using the serial connectivity uh, easily based on the basic configurations of the HDLC. So uh, let us go through here the, uh, the, the comments here below the slide. Establishment of HDLC as the link layer protocol over serial connections requires simply that the link protocol be assigned using the link 
protocol HDLC command under the interface view for the serial interface that is set to use the protocol. The configuration of the link protocol must be performed on both peering interfaces. The configuration of the link protocol must be performed. So we have to perform this command in the two involved interfaces <coughs> that are connected to the point-to-point -point network before communication can be achieved. If let's say we, at one side, we enable the HDLC and the other side, HDLC is not enabled, they will never be able to communicate. And also if one side enables HDLC and other side enables PPP protocol, then also they cannot communicate. It's similar to speaking different languages. That's why the configurations that we have done at the first side, it have to be compatible with the other side. So the configuration of the link protocol must be performed on both peering interfaces that are connected to the point-to-point -point network before communication can be achieved. Uh, as I explained, uh, the idea is very simple. Uh, now we will go to the other scenario. The first scenario is the basic configuration. We need only to run this command under the involved interface, then we assign an IB address. The second scenario, if we, for example, if let's say we have uh, another uh, IB address assigned to the router. So maybe we use the uh, loopback zero and we assign it an IB address for this router, then no need to waste another IB address for the serial uh, interface. We just borrow this IB address to the interface and also uh, in the other side, if, if it has loopback, uh, we can borrow it. If it doesn't have a loopback, we can uh, automatically or directly assign an uh, IB address for its serial interface. So uh, it, it could be one side assigning a numbered interface, uh, sorry, a numbered address, and the other side can be, be uh, configured basically by assigning an IB address to the serial interface directly. So here, in order to borrow the IB address from the loopback zero, we can go and uh, we can enter the serial uh, interface view first, then after that we run the same command, link protocol HDLC, then we hit TS, yes, then after that, instead of, uh, we will go back to the slide, to the last slide, after we hit TS, yes, in the basic configuration, we assign directly the IP address to the serial interface, as you can see here. But in our case here, because we don't want to assign a new IP address, we want to use the uh, IP address of the loopback zero. So in here, we run this command, IP address unnumbered interface loopback zero. This command will tell the, this serial interface to borrow the IP address from the loopback zero. So IB addresses can be borrowed from another interface in order to establish connectivity over the serial link. Too many things here uh, written below the slide. I don't want to uh, waste uh, time following this because for our final exam, actually everything is based on configuration and analysis. So maybe the questions will be like this. I will give you a scenario, maybe a topology, then I ask you to configure. Or maybe I give you the scenario with the configuration that I done before, then I ask you to analyze the, uh, to understand the configuration, then to do some task, maybe to find the mistakes, or maybe to correct the configuration, or maybe to tell whether this configuration are working or not, something like that. So this kind of questions are going to come for the final exam. In our final exam this year, because the final exam this year is an open book exam, that's why the C1 and C2 questions are not involved. So we will not have uh, like uh, uh, questions like define or list or maybe uh, draw or something like that. The basic questions are not going to come. So everything must be uh, from the C3 and the C4. C3 is the application to ask you to do some configurations based on a scenario. And the C4 is to analyze, to understand what is going 
uh, or what's wrong with the uh, with the uh, scenario maybe I give you a scenario uh, without uh, much uh, uh, information then I give you some commands then I ask you what these commands are used for so easily you can tell me uh, for example oh these commands are used to uh, provide the serial connectivity uh, as a point to point for example using the hdlc something like so it's the, the questions will be in this way uh, i'm really i'm trying to help but because this one is uh, i'm sure it's your first time to uh, to uh, go through a final exam online and hopefully we everything is uh, going to be smooth inshallah I pray for that because I don't want uh, to see you anymore in this course I want to see you only in other courses next year so inshallah uh, I, I want you all to pass but uh, as I always mention no free marks so you have to achieve it by your own I do my my job I explain for you I give you uh, all hands that I have uh, uh, all help that I can help uh, that I can give and then you have to achieve it in uh, the exam by your own. I cannot give you extra marks or uh, free marks. <coughs> so uh, that's all about it. We have the basic configuration here. It's only this command to go to the interface, then only this new command, which is link dash protocol space HDLC. Then after that, we hit yes. And after that, we assign an IP address. So in total, we have only one new command here. One new command to configure uh, one side of HDLC. So uh, in the assignment, uh, in assigning a numbered address in the HDLC, we have also another new IP address here to borrow from another interface, to borrow IP address from another interface so in in total we have only two new commands link dash protocol hdlc and the other one is ib address unnumbered interface loopback zero that's all about it and here is the configuration validation if you want to display so you can run this command display ib interface brief and you can see here for the second scenario you can see that the uh, serial interface uses the same IP address of the loopback zero. Why? Because we use the command, this command, to borrow the IP address for the serial 100 from the loopback zero. So both of them are using the same IP address, but this one is not going to, uh, to make any conflict. It's not going to make any conflict here because this one is not configured manually. The system knows that this serial interface uses the same loopback zero. But if manually you cannot configure the same IP address twice or more for multiple uh, uh, network interfaces. So the IP address is shown to have been borrowed from the loopback interface and assign it to interface serial 1000. So through the display IP interface brief command, a summary of the uh, address assignment is output uh, in the event of assigning an uh, unnumbered address, the address value will display as being present on multiple interfaces showing that the IP address has been successfully borrowed from the logical loopback interface for use on the physical serial interface. That's all about the HDLC. So now I'm going to open the, uh, what they call it, the ENSB. Then I will start with you the configuration. So uh, here we will start a new topology. Then we will drag two routers and we uh, use the serial link like this. Oh, sorry. This one is the auto. We use this serial link. So we select here. Oh, this one doesn't have serial. Okay, 
let us uh, let us select another type of routers so maybe we uh, better select the generic one generic router we put it here because generic router has uh, serial interfaces so here we have this one serial 00, zero for example and here is serial uh, zero, 00 then we uh, could easily go and like that and we run our devices <coughs> So uh, don't don't do uh, mistakes. Don't confuse uh, the dash dashes link in the simulator here means the serial link like that. Okay, but in the uh, uh, the th this shape in the simulator means auto. So don't confuse yourself. So you have the uh, word is already written here, serial. Okay, so now everything I think is going fine. So before this, let us configure the two scenarios. So at first, we want to uh, do the configuration for the basic uh, HDLC. So we will assume that uh, we want to use IP address here, 10.1.1.1 and 24. And also here, we uh, we will use interface uh, sorry i address 10112 with 24 for router 2 <coughs> so here we have the two routers let us first uh, undo undo terminal monitor and uh, after that we go to the system view then here we uh, we should remember our commands. So I, I don't want to confuse you. It's very, very simple. The first thing that we have to do in router one, we have to go to the serial interface. We have to go to the serial interface first. Then at the router two also, we go to the serial interface. Then we assign this IP address here for router one and the other IP address for the router two. But this one, the assignment of the IP address actually is uh, is going to be based on the command of uh, uh, what they call it here, uh, the command that we just taken here, which is the link protocol command. Okay, so easily, easily we can go directly to interface, interface, uh, serial, zero, zero, zero and we use link protocol HDLC. Link protocol HDLC. The uh, message told me that uh, I am sure, uh, are you sure to change the protocol? Uh, I will hit yes, enter. Then after that, I will assign the IP address, which is 10.1.1.1 with 24. That's all for router one. So we go to router two. Uh, terminal monitor then after that we go to system view then we enter face serial zero 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 and after that we use the link protocol HDLC and hit yes after that then we assign the IV address 10 1 1 2 face 24 so here we are, everything is ready now. So if uh, we are at router, router two, so can we ping router one? It's supposed to be easy. So here we are, we configured uh, the connectivity between router one and router two using serial. It's very, very basic and simple. We don't have anything to do, anything to think about. It's very simple. Okay, even simpler than uh, the uh, what they call it uh, the uh, switching configuration. Switching configuration is somehow uh, more complicated, especially if we do something for STB or RSTB. So here the concept is very simple. Only one command, and we finish.
So you can see here, we, we go to router one, and we try to pin router two, pin one, one, two, also. It's working very well, very simply. So this is the first scenario. Uh, what if we don't want to use this? We don't want to assign the, uh, what they call it, the IB address. We don't want to assign the IB address of uh, this to, to this serial interface. So what we want to do here is only to go to the interface interface serial, we want to undo now, uh, zero, 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 then we undo, we undo this command that we use to assign the IB address, here we undo that command. Why we undo this command? Because we want to remove the IB address from the uh, serial interface. So now if we run the command of Bing, we just now it was working, is it? So now after we remove the IB address from the router one serial interface here, so uh, we already lost the connectivity. So instead of assigning this IB address to the serial interface directly, we want to borrow it from the uh, 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 loopback. But before we borrow it, we have to configure it to the loopback. So first we have to go to interface loop back zero. Then we assign the IB address, the same IB address. To make sure that everything is uh, not working because of the assignment of this IB address to the loop back, we still want to test now. So we will test again, we will bring again, it doesn't work. So when it's going to work, when we borrow the IB address from the loopback zero, then we assign it to the serial interface. So uh, what is the command here? As you can see, IB address and number interface. Okay, very simple, very easy idea. So IB address, exactly the same. No, 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 we have to, to go to interface, uh, serial, zero 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 then we run the IB address exactly as the command that we assign the uh, IB address then we use a number uh, if you don't know if you cannot remember you can specify you can write a question mark then it will show you the options that you have so we have only the interface option here and what interface that we want to use for uh, to borrow? We want to use the interface loopback zero. So this command is only to borrow the IP address from loopback zero to this serial interface. So after this here, we hit enter. Then we try the Bing command again, and we will see the result here. It doesn't work. Do you know why it doesn't work? Because uh, these two sides are not compatible. The configuration here is uh, uh, different than the other side and uh, it may uh, make a uh, problem. So let us go through the configuration first. So we display save, uh, sorry, current, we did not save yet. We see what configurations we have done. So the first thing we have done, the uh, what they call it, the serial interface, 000, we put it to, HDLC, then we uh, borrow the IP address from unnumbered. <coughs> you see the other interfaces are set to the DPP mode by default. Okay, so that's all we have done. Only this IP address, 
we assign it uh, for the loopback zero. And here we are. We have nothing other than this. So we display here the current. We see our configuration. Maybe we have something wrong. Uh, it's only to confirm that uh, everything is going fine. So here we have the uh, 000, 000 uh, interface, serial interface is set to HDLC and the IP address is assigned the uh, 10112 IP address. So here, uh, what happened here in 10.1.1.2, it doesn't work. Okay, let us see now. Uh, we go to router, we go to router two, then we go to interface serial zero, 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 then undo IP address 10.1.1.2.24. So we delete the IP address from the serial interface, then we go to interface back zero and we assign the IP address to the loop back zero then we we go back to the uh, serial interface again then we borrow the IP address uh, from sorry unnumbered interface loop back zero so here if i display if i display current configuration we can see here that the loopback also here uh, sorry the serial uh, 000 is set to hdlc and is set to unnumbered interface and borrowed the ip address from loopback zero and here we also have the same thing display uh, current so we can see here the same thing for router one and we see the loopback interface loopback zero interface it's assigned this IP address 10.1.1.1 and the subnet mask is 24 then we see here the other side the IP address is 10.1.1.2 and the subnet mask is 24 so what will happen here if we uh, if we ping from router one to router two like that, I don't know what's uh, going on, but uh, it's supposed to work easily. Okay, let us, uh, let us check here in the slide, we have this command, the configuration validation. If we display IB interface brief, display IB interface brief, then we will see uh, the configuration. We make sure that the IB addresses are uh, successfully borrowed from the, uh, what they call it, from the loopback zero. Display IB interface, Okay, and uh, also we need to, uh, this one as you can see, loopback zero is 10111 slash 24 and the state is up and also here the loopback, the serial interface is 10111.24 and also the state is up and also here IB uh, interface display IP interface brief. So here we also have the same thing. This one is 10.1.1.2, uh, 24 up up, and also the same thing, the same IP address borrowed for the serial. It's supposed to work fine, but uh, we don't know what's going on. Because as I mentioned always, this one is a, a simulation 
uh, that can have an issue, especially when you undo the configuration. So maybe we need to uh, run the save command here. Yes, and hit enter, and also here, save, yes, and enter. Then we close this, we shut down everything, sorry, we shut down from here. And after that, we start again. So this one is also brought from to zero. <laughs> so here we can see this uh, two routers. <laughs> So if we think here, or let us display to make sure that everything is uh, okay. Now we display our saved configuration because we, we already run the command save. So here we have the uh, uh, serial interface 000 uh, set to HDLC and uh, assign it a numbered uh, IP address from the loopback zero. Let us continue here to see the assignment of the IP address to the loop back zero and also we go here and we see display saved configurations then here we can see this one is assigned in the same way and IP address is supposed to be assigned to the loop back zero then here we have we have to uh, display interface uh, interface the IEB interface brief, then we can see here both of them have the same IP address and also here if we run the same command display IB interface brief also it shows the same configuration. So everything's supposed to be working properly but if it doesn't work that means don't think about the configuration. The configuration is thousand billion percent is correct. But the simulation in many cases can make problems and it sometimes doesn't work. So here from router one, we can, we cannot make. Okay, so this is, uh, I, I, I'm not sure, maybe because of the, uh, because we use the generic router, it, it's the, also possible. And uh, uh, another thing, maybe because we modified the scenario. So maybe if we create a fresh scenario, then we use it from the beginning from scratch based on the unnumbered interfaces, then uh, everything's supposed to be fine. Okay, so guys, that's all about this. Let us uh, stop this scenario. Then uh, we continue our slides here. So the other mode, this one is actually everything about, about the uh, HDLC. We have only these two commands, link protocol HDLC, and the other side, the other command is to borrow the IP address from the interface. This is for using the unnumbered scenario, but uh, uh, for the basic scenario, we have only this command uh, HDLC to assign the HDLC to the serial port, uh, and after that we easily assign the IP address directly to the physical serial interface using the IP address command. <clears throat> okay, so uh, as I mentioned from the beginning, we have for the serial connectivity, we have two protocols. The first one is HDLC that we have already covered and the concept is very simple. The other one is the uh, PPP protocol. So why we need to have multiple protocols? Because the HDLC is very basic and it's the uh, legacy protocol which, is, uh, which has uh, many uh, issues. One of them, uh, one of the very common issue is the security. Uh, uh, that's why if, if, let's say we need to use the security for the uh, serial protocols, we have to implement PPP protocol application. So PPP actually is very similar to the HDLC. That's why I'm, I'm going to go through it uh, quickly 
So uh, as you can see here, a multi, multi protocol standard used as uh, with HDLC to define the link layer operation over a serial medium. It's the same functionality, but in here we have uh, uh, multiple, or oh, sorry, we have uh, uh, support for the uh, security. So uh, here you have to understand some concepts. Uh, PPP actually is uh, standards for the point-to-point -point protocol, uh, which is a data link layer protocol that encapsulates and transmits network layer packets over point-to-point -point, uh, link. Point-to-point -point link is uh, shortened as P2P. So PPP supports point-to-point -point data transmission over full duplex synchronous and asynchronous links. So also PPP can be used for synchronous and asynchronous. Uh, BPP is built upon the serial line internet, uh, internet protocol, which is SLIP, serial line internet protocol, SLIP. This is a new term. PPP supports post synchronous and asynchronous links, whereas other data link layer protocols, such as Frame Relay, Frame Relay actually is an old technology. Uh, but still, uh, uh, still utilized under, un, until now because the equipments have been installed in many countries and the cost, their cost was very expensive. That's why they cannot throw it. They still have to uh, find a way to utilize it. Uh, so, such as a frame relay support only synchronous links. So it depends on the technology. Sometimes you need to use the synchronous. Uh, synchronous and sometimes you need to apply the asynchronous depends on the hardware you have uh, in your topology. So PPP is an extendable <coughs> protocol facilitating the extension of not only IB but also other protocols and uh, is capable of supporting the negotiation of link layer attributes. So in here they have something called negotiation but in the HDLC uh, it's very basic, very simple, very uh, legacy protocol that doesn't have too much uh, complications. So BBB supports multiple network control protocol, which is NCP, network control protocols. So this is to control networks. And also uh, it, uh, this network control protocol, such as the IB control protocol, which is called IBCP, uh, and also inter-network uh, packet exchange control packet, which is IPXCB, to negotiate different network layer attributes. Also, PPP provides password authentication protocol, PPP, PAP, password authentication protocol. This one actually is used for authentication. It's very simple. This one, very basic protocol used for authentication. And the other one uh, is called challenge handshake authentication protocol, which is CHAP, call it. Chat, chat like this for network security authentication. So this one is security authentication and that one is authentication, simple authentication. So uh, uh, lately uh, the CHAB is the uh, predominant protocol used for security for serial connectivity everywhere. Even uh, if you check, if let's say you install a, a Streamix modem from the TM, uh, uh, they will use the ADSL modem, then after that they have to create a serial connectivity between your modem and the uh, rack, uh, and uh, they have to enable the BPV protocol, and after that you will see that they are using the CHAP protocol for security. So uh, PPP has no retransmission mechanism, reducing the network cost and speeding up packet transmission. So uh, that's all about the uh, PPV uh, protocols and uh, background. Uh, so here we, uh, the thing that we understood for the BB, from the BBB is that it can support or provide security level. Uh, also here we have some components of PPP. We have many things here if you want to read. Uh, actually these things uh, are only a knowledge if you want to uh, uh, have a good knowledge you may go through. So we have uh, uh, this PPP encapsulation method, 
so this defines the format to be used when supporting encapsulation of upper layer protocols such as IB, IBX. So this one is uh, uh, necessary to decide what kind of encapsulation is going to be used. Then also we have something called LCP, which defines the method of establishing, configuring, and testing the data link connection, LCP. And also we have NCP. NCP defines a set of protocols for establishing a connection and negotiating parameter uh, for different network layer protocols. So this is the components of the uh, PPP uh, and based on the, uh, what they call it, the, based on the negotiation, the two sides will decide what kind of uh, protocols they are going to use, unless you uh, interrupt manually. Uh, here also we have the link establishment process. So the link establishment process uh, actually is going to go through uh, five stages. So at the beginning when the switches, when the routers are shut down or not configured, the, uh, the, the process, the states will be dead. Then when we uh, configure them, or we start up the devices, then it will start establish. If it can open, then it, uh, it will go to do authentication. If the authentication is correct, they will start the network. Then after that, after they finish, they will close, terminate, and down back to the dead. And also, if they establish and they cannot open, they will fail and go back to the dead. If they establish and they cannot authenticate also, it will fail, then terminate, and we'll go back to the dead state. So that's all about it. Uh, uh, here we have the PPP frame. PPP frame actually is very simple compared to the uh, uh, other protocols. Uh, here we have a flag for the start and flag for the end. Uh, also we have the address the control, exactly similar to the, what they call it here, similar to the HDLC. So here we have address control information FCS. In this format, here we have address control uh, instead of uh, information. We have something called the protocol. Then after that, we go we go to the information similar to the uh, HDLC. So the extra field that we have is the protocol because here we have uh, multiple protocols are going to be used with the VBP based on the negotiation. So the protocol should be carried in the packet. And also the information is structured here. They have code, identifier, length, and data. Data is structured also. So this one is an LCP packet format. And this one is an LCP configuration option format. So this one is an option. So inside the data, we, we may have type length data and also type length data. It will be uh, 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 I mean, uh, serially uh, or sequentially send it uh, as a stream one by one. So uh, here, one uh, uh, LCP uh, configuration option is uh, including the type, length, and data. Then the second one will include also type, length, and data, and so on. <laughs> Okay, protocol types used in LCP negotiation. So protocols that is going to be used for the negotiation, uh, we have something called configure request. Uh, this one uh, include the parameters for link establishment and link configuration. Then we have configure ACK. Uh, after the request is sent from one side, then the other side should send a configure ACK. And this one, the uh, configure ACK confirmation, uh, send once all configure request parameters have been validated. So uh, if, if let's say we have one side and another side, the first side will send what they collect, what they call it CR, which is configuration uh, request. So here configuration request like that. So if this router accept all the parameters that comes through the uh, CR, then an acknowledgement will be sent. So configuration acknowledgement will be sent. 
But if let's say this configuration, this configuration is not accepted, is not all accepted. So here, uh, another type of uh, message is going to be sent. So in this case, the configuration na yeah, uh, means none acknowledged or not acknowledged means uh, not everything is accepted. So the parameters included in configure request are recognized, but not all accepted. So here that means they still need to negotiate. So maybe they have something wrong uh, with the parameters, uh, and this side wants the uh, original side to change the configuration. So based on this uh, CN, this side will generate another CR until this guy accept. If this guy accept, then the acknowledgement at the end, configuration acknowledgement will be sent. But if this guy cannot accept, they tried many times to send com uh, configuration requests many times, but this guy cannot uh, accept all configuration. In this case, the reject, reject will be sent. Reject is going to be sent. And the connection is going to fail. So uh, that's all about the, uh, what they call it, about the configuration or the packet types used in the LCB negotiation. It's very simple, actually. I'm not going to go through the whole details that we have below here. Uh, if uh, you want to read, just read it by yourself. Uh, also, here we have something called common link parameters of LCB negotiation. Actually, this negotiation here, the messages, will carry these parameters. The uh, message will carry the maximum receive unit and also the authentication protocol and also the magic number. So for example, if let's say one side sends, uh, sends for example, 1,500 and also sends the chat protocol and uh, magic number is enabled, then the other side cannot use the chat because it's uh, maybe uh, its version is very old or something like that. It maybe have only the uh, PAP, P-A-P. So in this case, the other side will, will send a configuration NAC to tell the original side that the CHAB is not supported. Then the original uh, router will send another time 1500 with the P-A-P and this magic number is enabled, so if the other side can support this configuration, they directly will establish the connection after the uh, other side send the configuration acknowledgement. It's very simple uh, idea. Uh, LCB link parameters negotiation, uh, as I explained, successful PPP negotiations result in a configure acknowledgement reply to a configure request packet. So after the negotiation, the negotiation will start with the request uh, and it may go through many steps, maybe uh, multiple NACs is going to be sent from the router B to router A, but at the end, if they agree about the configuration, then router B must send, configure, acknowledge to establish the connection. Otherwise, if they cannot accept the configuration, then router B must send a reject message and the connection will not be established. <coughs> okay, this is already explained. And uh, here, okay, this you just go through and you can understand. Uh, as I explained, I think it's not uh, necessary to repeat it. Uh, let us go directly to the configuration. Configurations of the PPP is very simple also compared to the uh, HDLC, but only here we have some extra configurations that we can use for the authentication because the HDLC doesn't have authentication. But here, PPP can support authentication. That's why we need to do some extra configuration. But for the basic connectivity, if we want to use PPP, we need to use link protocol PPP, then we assign IP address directly and everything is going to work. Okay? So uh, let us go to the simulator here and let us establish a new scenario. Uh, maybe this time I, I will use different router that may support 
serial connectivity, I will see uh, this one. Oh, it doesn't have a serial. Doesn't have serial. Let us check this one, or maybe this one. Oh, doesn't have serial as well. So it seems that we we will keep using the uh, uh, generic type uh, also. So here we have two routers. I'll put them here. Uh, to be easy for us to show the configuration and the topology at the same time. So here we have the serial 00, serial 00 here. Uh, and also, if let's say, let us use the same IP addresses. So here we will use 10.1.1.24. And uh, here we are going to use one one two twenty four. Okay, so let us start the topology and see how to configure this. So uh, the basic configuration is very simple. We have this command instead of uh, HDLC, we use PPP. And by the way, PPP is configured by default. So maybe if we assign directly the IP addresses, if we assign directly IP addresses, I, I will try to assign IP addresses directly without uh, using the command. Because uh, here, if we display saved uh, configuration, you can, what happened? Okay. See. Oh, okay. Display current because uh, saved is empty. So here we have the uh, link protocol. PPP is already configured by default. So what we need here, what what do we need here is only to uh, assign an IP address, undo terminal monitor. Then we go directly to interface, sorry, system view. Then after that, we go to interface serial 0, 0, 0. And we automatically or directly assign IP addresses, 111 space 24. And we go here also, we undo the and after that system view, then we go to interface serial 000, and we directly assign IP address 10112 and 24. So we only configured IP address, and now we will test. So from router two, I'm going to ping 10111. It works very simply, very easy. Why? Because we configured the uh, P, uh, sorry, PPP protocol uh, using the basic configuration. <clears throat> so this is the basic configuration of the PPP. Then here we have the PPP authentication mode. So uh, in the PPP authentication mode, uh, we have the first mode is the PAP and the second mode is the CHAP. So in both cases, in both cases, we have one side to be authenticator and the other side to be authenticated. So the authenticator, we have to configure the authenticator, the password at the authenticator side. The, the password authentication protocol relies on the transmission of a password over the link of peer authentication. So in one side here, we have to save the password in the database and the other side, when it requires to connect to the router A, it has to provide the password. Then the password coming from router B need to be compared to the password saved in the database. So one is authenticator and the other side is authenticated. Uh, uh, both is 
uh, working in the same way, but the PAB is much simpler because here the authentication uh, request send username and password in plain text. So the password and username is uh, uh, coverable or discoverable. So anyone, uh, any unauthorized person can uh, catch the packet from the network, then uh, can find what is the password and the uh, username. And uh, for the CHAP here, the, uh, there is a challenge will be sent from the authenticator to the authenticated. Then the authenticated router must find the uh, solution for the challenge number. Then it will send the response to the authenticator. If the, uh, the authenticator also based on the challenge number that's sent to the authenticated, the authenticator must calculate the uh, result. So after it calculated the result, it will compare its result with the uh, result coming from the router B. If the two results are the same, uh, that means the connection is successful, the authentication is successful. If the two results are different, then the connection or the authentication is going to fail. So the challenge handshake authentication protocol relies on a challenge and challenge response for peer authentication. It's a very simple idea. Uh, I'm not going to uh, waste your time in uh, these details. That's not going to uh, uh, be useful for your final. That's why I will go directly to the, uh, what they call it, to the configuration. So here, for the PAP authentication. So if, if we want to enable authentication here, what we want to do, we have to use the AAA protocol, which is uh, authentication authorization, uh, what they call it? Uh, the AAA protocol, uh, AAA protocol is uh, standing for uh, authentication authorization and accounting. So 3A is all about the security, uh, all about authentication, all about authorization and accounting. So the first thing we have to do is to go to the uh, I, uh, AAA protocol or AAA interface view. Then after that, we uh, create a user locally. So the user will be saved in the local database of router A. So uh, the username is going to be Huawei. Then the password, uh, we, we want to use Huawei123. Uh, in the cipher mode because we have cipher and symbol. Okay, let me show you the configuration here. So here, if let's say we want to enable the configuration at the router A, uh, we quit from here, then we go using the 3A command to go to the uh, AAA view. Then after that, we use the local user command. Then uh, in my case, I'm going to use ABC, uh, DEF or maybe ASD1234. This is my username and a password. Password here. If you hit the question mark, you will see that uh, it has only cipher. It depends on the version actually. Last time they have cipher, I think, and uh, symbol. Symbol means uh, the password is uh, going to be plain text. But here, I, I think they improved the security because even in the slides here, if you go through the slides, you will see the difference between the PAB and C, uh, uh, CHAP is the uh, here. This one is plain text and that one is uh, ciphered. So let us see here. <coughs> let us see the command here. <coughs> so we use password cipher here, and then we have to put the password. If let's say my password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, add a new user. So the user is already added into the database. So now we need to assign the, uh, the uh, services to uh, the user. That means we need to give permission to the user. So uh, the user uh, here 
in our case, we use ASD1234. So now we want to give the ASD1234 the permission to use PPP. In order to do that, we have also to use local user. Then we have to use our username. Then after that, we have to uh, select the surface type like this. So we tell that we tell the system that user ASD1234 can use the uh, uh, surface type of PPP. Okay, that's all about it. And after that, you can see here we need to enable the PPP protocol in the interface. And after that, we have to go to the serial interface interface and because these commands uh, are already uh, already done for our uh, serial interface that's why uh, this command and this command is already done I will run only the read commands here <coughs> so here we go to the serial 000, zero, zero. then after that we run the command PPP authentication like this authentication mode then here, if we hit question mark, we will see the chap and pap. So in our case, we want to use which one? So if let's say we want to use the pap, then okay, we hit the pap, and that's all it's supposed to work. So we go to the other side also, to the other router. <coughs> uh, in the other router, we, we, uh, we are not going to create a user. So that's why we are not going to use the AAA protocol. Uh, the only thing that we want to use is to use this command, PPP. Then uh, we decide if, let's say, we, we hit question mark, we will see that we have uh, MP multilink PPP. So uh, in our case here, we, we cannot find what is the uh, used uh, command so we would use here oh this one is uh, oh sorry 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 we have to go to the interface serial first zero 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 then after that we use PPP and question mark like this we see how many things that we can use so in our case we are going to use tab and after that we have to provide the local user that's already given by the other side. So uh, in our case here, the password, the username is ASD1234, and the password like this, if we hit question mark, we will see cipher and symbol. So you see the other side doesn't have symbol, but here we have symbol. So, uh, ah, yeah, because that one, that one is, uh, is not going to be sent. Here at the router one, when we uh, use cipher, that means the password is going to be uh, uh, saved in a cipher mode in the database. But here, the uh, password that is going to be sent for authentication purpose from router B to router A is going to be sent through the network. So uh, unauthorized people can catch it and can read it. So in this case, we decide in what mode we need to send, uh, to send this uh, password is it a plain text or cipher so I want to use uh, cipher I want to use cipher then our password is one two three four five six is it what password do we use yes okay I, I will hit enter then here if if I want to bing uh, from router two to router one it's working okay uh, why if we why if we uh, go to the interface then we change this command instead of this password one two three four five six we use one two three six five four which is wrong am I right so it's wrong so what if we bing ten one one two still working Maybe because the connection is already established and we did not, uh, we did not uh, what they call it, uh, terminate it. So we need to run shutdown and undo shutdown. 
then we display current. We make sure that uh, our configuration is correct. Okay, let's see. Then we ink 10, 1, 1, like this. Now it's not connected. Why? Because now the password we provide from router B is not equal to the password saved in the router A. So to fix this, we have to go to the uh, interface again. And after that, we have to fix the password. One, two, three, four, five, six. And hit enter. Then if we bing, it's supposed to work. But why? Because the connection is still uh, still up. We need to run the shutdown command. Okay, shutdown. And do shutdown. Then we, if we bing here, it works. So we have to make sure that the configuration. We, we use to create the password here in the uh, authenticator side, it must be equally uh, prepared or configured in the other authenticated devices. Otherwise, the connectivity is not going to be provided. <coughs> okay, so uh, here if you want to check, if you want to, uh, to see the kind of uh, information uh, transferred between the router A and router B, you can use the debugging command. So debugging command in this case is debugging space PPP space PAP space all to see all traffic uh, sent and received from uh, router A to router B and uh, vice versa. Okay, regarding the chat. So uh, in our case here, we already enab enabled the PAP protocol. What if we want to uh, enable different thing? So in, in our case here, we are going to restart because I don't want to go through any other uh, issue. So here we shut down because we did not save. So we have to run back things. Then after that, we have to configure from scratch. So we have to go to the uh, to the interfaces, serial interfaces, and we have to assign IP addresses for both of them. And uh, uh, link protocol is uh, by default set to the PPP. So we no need to configure it again. But also, if if you want to configure it, it's uh, it's also possible. Undo terminal monitor uh, sys. Then after that, interface serial 000. And here we use uh, uh, link protocol. If, if you want, it's by default set to PPP. Uh, then after that, we assign IP address for router 2 is 10.1.1.2 space 24. And for router 1, we need to undo here also terminal monitor then system then after that we go to interface serial 000 and uh, we set the link protocol to PPP and assign IP addresses to 10.1.1.1 and 24 here we are, everything is fine. Let us go back to the slide and see what we can do. So here to enable the uh, chat, I also need to go to the authenticator, which is the router A, and we also need to use the router, the triple A protocol. So we need to go out and we hit the triple A uh, uh, protocol to get into its view. Then after that, we have to create a local uh, user and we still want to use ASD1234 as a username and password. We, we want to use also Cypher. We see how many options. We have only the Cypher option. So we uh, use Cypher, then we put the password. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the same way, exactly. 
So uh, creating the user uh, for the PAP or CHAP is the same way. So we don't have to change anything. Also giving or assigning the permission to the, to the user uh, is still the same, the same thing. So it's the one, two, three, four. So we, uh, we want to assign a permission surface type of PPP to the user is the one, two, three, four. Okay, it's assigned. Then after that, we go to the interface serial uh, zero. Uh, uh, this, this command is already uh, run. So we need to only enable the chat. So the only difference here is to change the word path to chat. And the sequence is exactly the same. So quit space, then S000. And here we have to use PPP authentication mode chat. So here we are, we finished the configuration of the authenticator. So the authenticator should create a local user and save it into the router A uh, database. Then router B should enable the same protocol, which is the chat. But after that, it should provide the password and username and password that's similar to the one saved in the router A database. Then the username and password will be sent from router A to router, uh, sorry, from router B to router A. Router A is responsible to compare or to uh, verify uh, that the username and password are correct based on the saved copy in the database. So here, uh, router A is finished. Then we go to router B. Router B, we also uh, assign it the PPP protocol to the serial interface. And also we assign it an IP address. So what we need here is only to use the PPP chat protocol. And we assign the user ASD1234. OK? So uh, in here, there's a small difference, actually. So the user can be assigned separately. Uh, I'm not sure, yeah. Because some versions, uh, you can provide them together. And some versions uh, it, it must be provided separately. So the first command is BPP chap user, then we put the username. And the other command is BPP chap password, then we give the password. So the same thing here, instead of user, we use password. Then we decide, is it cipher or symbol? Then after that we use, oh, sorry. Now I will use a wrong password, wrong password. We will see whether it's connected or not. So uh, the first thing I will shut down here, shut down, undo, shut down. Then I think route one, 10111. It doesn't work, why? Because the password we provide from router B, to router A is wrong. So what we want to do now is to go and fix the password. So here the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, and we hit enter. Now we need to shut down, shut down, undo, shut down, then we Bing. Okay, here we are, it works. So that's all about the configuration of the chat, uh, which is 100% uh, similar to the uh, configuration of the PAP protocol. The only thing here, when we provide uh, the authenticated device, when we provide the username and password, we, we provide them in separated commands. We cannot provide them in one command. But here in the, in the PAP, in the PAP we can provide the local user pass, uh, password here, uh, sorry, username here and the password. And also here we use the command BPP PAP uh, local user. But for that one, we use PPP chap user instead of local user. Okay, that's all about it. And uh, here we finish. I hope that everything is uh, uh, understood. If you have any problem, anything unclear, you can WhatsApp me, you can ask me before the final exam. Uh, don't make it, uh, don't wait until the last minute. 
try to uh, give it enough time, try to try uh, to, to do practice, to run some scenarios, uh, multiple scenarios, maybe uh, to connect multiple routers together using uh, point to point connectivity and so on. Okay. Uh, Hope everybody understood and inshallah I will see you in the next class soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.